Well, here you see me collecting some samples for microscopy and I did find a whole bunch of insects in the moss that are collected. Here you see a few of them clustered together on the surface of water. And I've got also some worms uh, that I found uh, that were kind of moving around and very interesting also some pollen grains and uh, also of course a whole bunch of diatoms. You see a whole collection of different things and where did I find them? Well, next to this train track here. Hi, Microbe Hunter here. Not to worry, the train tracks here have not been in operation for many years, but I think it's a good place uh, to find moss and I hope that I'm going to find some interesting microorganisms growing in the moss. Yeah, the train tracks are quite old as I already mentioned and there's lots of moss growing on there. I found an old nail, maybe over 100 years old, and this nail was pretty good for actually collecting some of the samples. So I tried to scratch some of the moss off and I put it into my little plastic container to take along home so that I can put it under the microscope. And uh, unfortunately I did not find any tardigrades like I hoped uh, to find, uh, but there were a whole bunch of other interesting microorganisms in the moss. So and I'm going to just show you now um, how I actually prepared the specimen and how I actually also was able to find the worms and the little insects. Now there was a peppermint chewing gum in the container. It smells still very strongly like uh, like peppermint and I hope uh, that the fumes do not uh, kill off any microorganisms that are in uh, in the moss. Yeah, so I of course uh, first had to take all of the moss out and I added a little bit of water. The moss was a little bit dry and, and then I tapped the moss on directly on a microscope slide hoping that I'm this way able to wash out some of the microorganisms. Cover glass of course has to go on top. Everything went directly under the microscope but uh, of course the whole thing was soaked so much in water so that I had to use some tissue paper to remove all of the excess. And I found the worm here. Um, I have no idea which type it is. It's a nematode for sure um, and in a recent video I actually showed you there were found quite many of them actually in the moss and on decaying, de decaying wood. And the green uh, color actually shows that maybe the worm has eaten uh, some algae um, and had, which have accumulated now inside the digestive system of the worm. Here we're looking at it under uh, with a greater magnification and uh, it's quite fascinating to see um, the transparent nature of this organism and of course uh, also there were many other organisms as well. This here for example this is a rotifer um, and uh, here I put directly a moss leaf under the microscope and the individual cells were also visible. So as you can see um, I've got a rather wild collection of different specimens uh, that uh, I'm going to show you today. Um, it was quite fascinating to see also a whole bunch of small insects clustered together on the surface of the water. Um, they did not sink because of the surface tension um, uh, but they were evidently trying to really hold on to something and uh, what they found is were just each other and that's why they were clustered together and we're kind of drifting around on the surface of, of the water. Uh, quite uh, small I have to admit uh, almost impossible to see with the unaided eye and uh, some of these uh, little insects also were crawling along of course on the moss itself. I have to admit uh, I was quite surprised to find uh, all of these things still in winter time but then again the temperature has not been very cold during the past couple of weeks so I'm not surprised that uh, certain insects have now also emerged and soon spring is going to start anyway. Yeah well um, I was not uh, quite happy with uh, the result yesterday a couple of insects a small little worm I don't know uh, I expected something more exciting maybe some tardigrades uh, but uh, you never know what you find and um, what I'm gonna do uh, today is I'm gonna pick up some more moss here I'm now at the, the little river uh, which is uh, near where I live and uh, maybe the environment here is a little bit more moist and uh, therefore maybe I'm able to find more interesting organisms. The moss feels to be very dry so maybe I still have to look for a different place. So I decided to go further down uh, to the water because I thought that maybe after all the moss collected from the old tree stump was a little bit too dry so I simply dumped uh, out my moss sample again and I directly tried to collect some of the specimens from the moss next to the water. Always take along some tools but then again I think it's easier to simply pick it up with your fingers. 
yeah and here you can see me collect some of the sample I put it again directly into the plastic container but then again there is pollution and there are plastic uh, parts also there uh, people shouldn't throw away these things and in a couple of weeks this river is not going to be accessible anymore because uh, of uh, plant growth and what I found is, is I found this uh, tree stump there and it seems that an animal apparently has eaten away part of the bark of the tree certainly not the ducks here but maybe there was a beaver around I have no idea uh, maybe you know a little bit better which animal could be responsible. Look, gotta show you something. Do you see these things here? Look at this. Lots of pollen. Now I'm gonna take this along because this one is definitely gonna be interesting under the microscope. Now, now what? Okay. Lots of pollen, lots of pollen. This is a hazelnut uh, flower um, and uh, it's producing pollen. And uh, I think we're going to have some nice hazelnuts growing over there. In any case, I took also uh, this uh, along and I put it under my stereo microscope and you could see the different ant the anthers that are actually responsible for making the pollen. And some of the pollen grains were also sticking directly on, on the flower pieces piece as well. Um, evidently, it's wind pollinated. Uh, that seems to be quite obvious. That's why the anthers are so exposed. And what I've done next is, is I tapped uh, those uh, yeah, on, the, uh, on the microscope slide again. I did not add any water just yet. I directly put the cover glass on top of it and had a look uh, under the microscope directly and what I saw is I saw of course uh, hundreds of small little pollen grains and uh, then I tried something which is uh, quite nice I added some water later on and I could actually see how the pollen grains were swelling in the water as they actually absorbed the water so it was quite a rapid process uh, that I'm going to show you just in a, in a few mo moments so I had a, a, a slight this is a slightly, nope, I have a problem talking today, at a slightly higher magnification. Um, and uh, you can now see the whole thing also in dark field, um, where you see the pollen grains bright on a dark background. I think this also looks uh, quite nice. But uh, what I would like to try now is I would like to try to add a little bit um, of water. So you could see the water uh, moving in all from the, from the right side. And now immediately the pollen grains start to swell up um, and to absorb the water. This is in real time, so no time time-lapse here and uh, let's have a look um, at it also at a slightly higher magnification and let's see how this works here again and you can see how the pollen grains are immediately starting to swell up um, and to absorb the water it's quite uh, quite nice to see as well um, and uh, another interesting thing is, is because now everything is surrounded by water the, the co contrast is also a little bit uh, better in, in the sense that I'm also now able to see many more details um, and this has to do with the fact that the refractive index uh, of the water is different than of air so it shows also that it's a very good idea always to put a little bit uh, of water on, on the specimen yeah so that's basically how I kept uh, this and here next to it is my little container with moss so what I've done is, is I went there a second uh, time uh, to collect uh, some of the moss because I was not quite happy the first time and this time I saw again a little worm and uh, I found also that these worms they evidently they try to be um, around I don't know some some algae and some debris and so on they were really really floating around separately but they were always attached to some kind of organic material evidently this not only acts as a food but also as a, an attaching surface and also maybe as, as protection some of these guys were really moving around quite wildly uh, quite a lot of activity and surprise surprise diatoms how can you believe that um, I thought that actually on moss uh, which actually was growing next to the river I did not really expect any diatoms but actually I found quite a few of them uh, diatoms are also algae they're doing photosynthesis but they have a so-called a silica shell and they look quite nice uh, um, under the microscope as well because they're a very regular structure and many of them actually try to glide around and uh, they're moving around on the microscope slide and right now um, I was actually able to see several of them that were moving around uh, on the microscope slide and yeah and however some of them uh, what they did is they were remained stationary they did not move around so much but I could actually see that they had some debris some particles some soil particles or clay particles sticking on the surface and while the cell itself the, uh, the datum itself remained stationary the particles started to move back and forth uh, on the cell so 
that will actually quite uh, quite fascinating uh, to observe as well. So you can now see that the particle is now all the way on the right side and uh, it's moving back and forth. This is a little bit time lapse right now uh, to show you that uh, yeah, there is on the surface of this uh, diatom there are some uh, some some structures evidently that uh, not only allow it to move but also is able to move the other things around. Quite uh, quite fun to observe, um, I think. It's, uh, yeah. But I've already seen uh, something like this uh, before, um, so it's something it's uh, a phenomenon that can be observed quite uh, quite frequently. Yeah, but there are soil particles and and small debris moving back and forth uh, on the surface of the diatom. Quite fun to watch. Yeah, let's uh, have a lo lo look here now uh, at some moss. Here I added a little bit of water onto the moss um, and uh, also a little bit in time lapse now and you can see actually how the moss absorbs the water and how the leaves of the moss start to separate as it absorbs the water. Yeah, so that's basically, you can see a whole bunch of different things that I uh, kind of put under the microscope uh, that has happened to find. I think during summertime or during springtime when it's a little bit warmer, um, I might actually uh, again observe different microorganisms, uh, but in any case, I was quite happy to have found those things that I have found. Um, and uh, this actually shows that uh, even in winter time, there are plenty of things that you can uh, observe. In any case, I think that should be enough for today. I wish you all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always. Please do consider subscribing to the channel if you liked it. And yes, see you around next time. Bye bye.